right. Here we are. It's Friday after a couple week break. Uh, we're back to API storytelling, uh, my favorite day of the week. And I've got my friends here. Let's uh, let's bring in Mike. Mike. Hey, how you doing? Doing all right. Doing all right. Feeling refreshed after some time off. Ready to come back and do some uh, storytelling here. Very cool. Very cool. I'm happy to be here. Uh, coming to you live from Research Central in Kentucky, which is my basement, and uh, enjoying enjoying life. So uh, we're in the middle of summer here. It's hot. Um, I'm looking forward to some nice, relaxing convo. Are, are the cicadas done? Cicadas are done for the most part, although we're we're in the final stage, which is the nymph stage. So the eggs are hatching now, which means these eggs kind of rain down onto the ground, and then they have to spend the next week or two burrowing down below the permafrost layer, these tiny little nymphs, to wait for 17 years. Wow. Magical. Yeah. Magical. It is a, ma All right. yeah, it's a magical thing. Let me get Aiden in here. Hey, guys. Wow, hey. I'm in the middle. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is like new. Uh, Restream looks like it's got an update. What are we doing here? There's that. Oh. Oh. Okay. Well, we got a guess, so let me see how that's going to work out. But yeah, it's a. Uh, I've got to adjust my mic and get in the center here. So, okay. So, how are you doing, Aiden? I'm good. Uh, I, I think we should change the name of the show to API Story Yelling and just go to the top of a mountain somewhere and start yelling into the valley. I think it'd be great. What? Yeah. Story, <laughs> Story <laughs> yelling. Yeah. Okay. I'll see. You. I'm going to the mountain. See you guys. <laughs> well, I'm mostly deaf, so I really like this one because I'm notorious for yelling all the time. So I it's, support it's, this. It's really therapeutic to scream loudly. So we could just make I think the new a new conference. This could be a conference. You go out in nature, you yell your talk into the valley, and then you just go about your business. When there's nobody in the valley, right? Uh there could be someone in the valley, but Maybe. it's not really for them, it's for you. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Sheep, goats, lizards, stuff like that. I like it. Um, so we took some time off. We're back. Um, and uh, I'm, I feel refreshed. I got some time off and took care of some personal things and and back. I'm excited. I have dinner with, with Aiden next week in person, wow. which is going to be weird. Yeah. Very weird. Um, look forward to seeing you sometime, Mike. Uh, hopefully I'll make it out your way or you'll make it out my way. Yeah, we'll figure something out. We'll, we'll, yeah, we'll definitely do this. But I'm envious now. Is that Aiden? That means you're on the West Coast now? Or are you going to be? This is, yes, this is the West Coast. This is an Airbnb in Palo Alto. This uh, is the so. West Coast in Palo Alto. Okay. All right. That explains a lot. Well, now I'm super jealous. Okay. Very cool. Well, be safe out there. You're invited if you can make it. <laughs> Won't be able to make it this time, but again, going to have to make that change. It's, it's going to be a challenge for me. We'll see. Well, uh, back today, we, we've got a guest here, and, and um, I'll, I'm going to do the introduction. He's, he's my little brother, um, <laughs> Matt Trask. He's uh, notorious for uh, APIs You Love to Hate podcast. No, I'm kidding. APIs. <laughs> APIs. So every time I say this, um, I just did it in the OAI marketing meeting as well, because I don't hate APIs. I mean, I don't. So Phil Sturgeon is is his partner in crime, and and Phil's notorious for for hating on APIs, and and that's definitely a big part of their brand. And so every time I say it, I always stumble it and fumble it. And now I'm even going to do so even more because I've I've twisted my words. But anyways, Matt is. Um, I've done the podcast with Matt. Um, I haven't had the honor of actually doing it with Phil yet, but Matt's uh, ubiquitous presence in the API space, super knowledgeable programmer, um, compassionate, caring individual, very, uh, very opinionated, and but in a in a big teddy bear kind of way. Um, I, I he's you know he's and I and I kid he's not actually my brother, but uh, some folks seem to think he is, and. I kind of uh, 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 jive energy-wise with him in that same way. I think but I feel like he's he's definitely my brother from another brother mother. But let me bring in. Matt. Sorry. Is getting weirder and weirder by the minute. I, 
Yeah, Matt, do you have a, do you have a, do you have a shirt that says that? <laughs> says I'm Ken's brother. No, not yet. <laughs> just an arrow. <laughs> just, just pointing up. Uh, <laughs> that was that was quite an intro. Thank you. Uh, that was a hell of an intro, man. Yeah, I, I know. I'll have to. Uh, I'll, I'll have to Venmo Ken for that one later. <laughs> the, I'll have to cover uh, his next hot chicken expenses when he's in Nashville. Oh, yes. Wow. Oh, you're in Nashville. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yep. now that's crazy. So, so I'm I'm in Northern Kentucky. So I'm in. Cincinnati area, Covington. So we're really, I mean, not it's us. hours away, but but not that in in the grand scheme of things, not that far at all. No, no yeah. I mean that's probably like what three ish hours for me, probably eh, three or four hours. Yeah, you're a little <laughs> further. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would drive yeah. to Bowling Green, say hi to Stephen Mizell, and then head south and go to Nashville. Yeah, there, yeah, yeah. So we used to uh, like I go to Louisville every once in a while. We used to live in Fort Knox, so like I'm familiar with the okay. Kentucky ish sure. area. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Oh, all right. So a little context on the hot chicken reference. Uh, API Strat in Nashville. Matt and I went out. Uh, it, I don't think it was my, no, it might have been my first hot chicken, Nashville hot chicken experience. And I haven't responded to Aiden's dinner notes for next week, but I am a wuss when it comes to spicy food. So um, I, I, so what was your what was your belief system, Aiden? You said in yeah, China? yeah. I have a I have a very simple belief system. It's that food should hurt. <laughs> That's fair. That's that is the Nashville way. It's, uh, <laughs> so like I give I give bike tours uh, downtown for tourists, and they always ask like, oh, where should we go to hot chicken? And I'm like, you can go anywhere you want to, but just so we're clear, it's like it's a 48 hour experience if you catch my drift. <laughs> so, <laughs> So I'm like, don't get on a plane. Like, don't go get the hottest hot chicken you can, and then get on an airplane because it's gonna suck. So yeah, like <laughs> for a lot of people. Right in. Yeah, that was that was that was two subtle puns in one sentence. I am very impressed. <laughs> you know, and I'm not even a dad, but I'm loaded with dad jokes and puns. It's it's amazing how that works. So yeah. The what uh. What are we going to talk about today, gentlemen? Anybody have any uh, hot ideas? What's what's on the top of your head? I've I've got plenty, but I want to hear what, what's top of your guys' mind. Matt, I'm, I want to hear from Matt. Matt's Matt's the guest here. I am here on on an invitation from Aiden, who uh, <laughs> okay. like I don't, I don't think you guys understand like how the podcast I do roll, which is so Phil is. Six hours ahead of me in Europe, usually in a mountain. So when I have to podcast with him, it's like at seven o'clock in the morning, so I can get him before he starts drinking, but after he's done working, before he's on a bike, still within Wi-Fi range. And so I'm like half the time I'm just like, Phil, what are we talking about? Okay, cool. And we just we go for it. Uh go. I think uh, like the biggest API thing I've done lately was not even code related, it was meme related, and it's sparked off this massive um uh, I guess renaissance with the OAI marketing team. So I was give, I had to give a talk uh, to Portland PHP um, as an intro to the open API. And I wanted to make sure that people knew that it's called open API. It's not called Swagger. We don't want to call it Swagger. We don't want to reference Swagger. We want to move on, move forward. And so uh, I hope you might be familiar with the meme of the guy kneeling in front of the, the gravestone I guess, or he's like, he's doing this. And so yep. on the uh, on the grave center, it's Swagger. And then the guy kneeling was uh, Open API. <laughs> and so I just, I, I made it and I was like, I'm so proud of this. So I tweeted it out. And let me, that thing lit a fire on Twitter. <laughs> just, and like, it, it got like a mostly positive reaction. Uh, Marsh yeah. Gardner, um, Got in my my uh, he replied. He's he's kind of like yeah, like I get your point, but like it's not totally. And I'm like no, nah, it's, it's it's totally fair. And then next thing I know, like Marsh DMs me. He's like hey, like do you want to uh, do you want to come to the OAI marketing meeting and kind of share what you're seeing? And I was like yeah, sure. I'm like, yeah. I'll, I'll show up. I don't really know what you're expecting from me. So I just I, I didn't show up. 
didn't even know there was an OAI marketing group. I said, so that's, that's how, you know. Neither did I, to be fair. Yeah, no idea. And then uh, yeah, yeah. showed up. One could argue that that's a, for the OAI marketing group. <laughs> One could argue that that's a very true point. <laughs> it is a very big. So just context, the OAI marketing meeting is right before this. And I always jump from it to this. And Matt was just in it as well. So that I every see. Friday is, is OAI marketing yeah. and then API storytelling. So, but I mean, so it, it's funny because I showed up, I was just like, you know, like you go on Google, wherever you type in open API, the first six links are swagger related. Um, yeah. Swagger.io, swagger this, swagger that. You might see open API. And then the very next week, um, Mike, by Focal and I, the other ho the the third host of APIs you won't hate, uh, him and I just because funny enough, Phil couldn't find Wi-Fi in some small English town he was in, and so him and I just did a podcast and we just talked about like how do you fix marketing things like this. Turns out um, Kevin Swiber posted it to a Slack group, and then the OAI marketing meeting had its highest turnout ever. <laughs> now we have SEO experts showing up. We had someone from Smart Bear show up today too, funny enough. Yeah. Um, you guys and think. It, yeah. And like we kind of threw him to the wolves. We're just like, good luck, buddy. <laughs> like, like go back, go back to uh swag or go back to Smart Bear and tell him we need the uh swagger.io and so, stuff. So, so uh, yeah. Well, go ahead, finish. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, it's it's just, it's funny. It's like a dumb meme started what no, seems to be like a very interesting and thing. I was just saying to you in Slack, you're, you are a hero because so I've done, I've pissed people off in the OAI recently for kind of awakening people for other issues, which I won't go into, but this is one no, of no, those. No, no, let's go into issues. those. Like, let's, let's no, no, not. no. Those are maybe another episode, but uh, the swagger one, like I'm not nearly as PC as, as Marsh or anybody. And, and I've been part of this whole history and so the swagger story for me is is super important because it's it's the word the words we use matter and and there's a reason why swagger grew up the way it did and um so I'll give a quick little backstory how we got here and then we can continue this conversation is you know so for for our for our, for our audience who's watching who may not know the whole history here is swagger is an uh, an API specification that was created in 2010 by Tony Tam, who worked at WordNick, which is a dictionary API, which is, is pretty significant part of this as an API storytelling. And Swagger was a way how you describe the surface area of an HTTP 1.1 API. So how you define your paths, your parameters, all of that. And he he created it to publish up-to-date documentation for the WordNick API. So he created Swagger UI, which is the, the interactive documentation. And then he created a project called Swagger CodeGen because he needed to generate a uh, code gen from it. And Tony previewed it in a couple, I think, meetups. And then Mashery saw it in one of those meetups and they went home and created Mashery IO docs and totally ripped Tony off and then and beat him to the punch in publishing it. And so Swagger's had a rocky start from the get go. And then but then 2011 and 12, it, it rapidly picked up momentum. And I did a lot of storytelling around Swagger. Um, by the time it went into the OAI, um, or the Linux Foundation 2015, I had written 300 blog posts on Swagger. And I had, um, at API Strat, I had held numerous talks, work groups, working sessions, lightning talks around Swagger, trying to build it up into this thing. And for everybody, when it, it got to 2015, WordNick ran out of money and the, the startup was being sold. And so it went on the chopping block, all of it and its assets, including Swagger the spec, Swagger UI, and Swagger code gen. And there was a bidding war for it between a bunch of different companies. And Smart Bear won the bidding war. And they paid $1.3 million for all of these, all of this assets. 
And so like none of this is is public knowledge. Like I was involved in it. They asked me to, um, you know, I was working with Tony to do the marketing around Swagger when this happened. And then he joined Smart Bear, him and Ron joined Smart Bear. And then Smart Bear asked me to write up the press release for it, announce it and put my name and face on it. And two days before they launched the press release, I wrote the press release and two days before they launched it, they go, um, oh, okay. So they bought it and then we pushed on them, said, hey, you got to put it into a foundation so that it's, you don't screw it up and it's, it, it'll continue with trust. And they said, okay, we'll put it in the Linux foundation. Um, we'll create the open API initiative. And, and so we wrote the press release. We did the story. I had a blog post right on API evangelist. And this is back in the day where API evangelist mattered and doesn't really anymore. But, uh, uh, and then they said, oh, we're going to keep the name. We're going to trademark swagger. And we're actually going to call it open API. And we're going to put it into the open API initiative. And I, I was in Spain at the time. I was in Barcelona. And it was back in the day where I drank probably just a little too much on a regular basis um, or a lot too much. And I still have the email. Someday I'll post it. The email I wrote to Tony, just, you know, this. And he responded back, have you been drinking? Um, and I said, fuck yeah, I have. But this is like world ending shit, you know. And I was really pissed. And um I like swore to D Doug at Smart Bear, the CEO. I was like, I'll never work with you guys. You guys are dead to me. And um, and then I went through every blog post I ever wrote on Swagger and replaced it with the name Open API and never linked to Smart Bear ever again because I was so mad. And so like this history is important because like everyone to this day still thinks Swagger is the thing, the word is really important and really matters. Secondarily, people don't know the difference between Swagger UI, the docs, and Swagger, the specification. Most people think Swagger um, is a document is just documentation. And so this is one of the perpetual ongoing existential crises of the specification and the API community. And everybody in the OAI was just like, mm -hmm, we're not going to talk about this because Smart Bears like did all of this and we have to like you know be respectful and and i love everybody at smart bear like most most everyone who works there frank ollie like i have a lot of friends there so i really don't want to diss anybody at smart bear but they did it for an seo play and that's why they kept the name doug said to me i have to make recoup my 1.3 million dollars and that's just the way it is and they've been riding on that seo wave and they've been benefiting from that confusion so anyways that brings us back here to you know what you did is massive it's huge and it's crazy important that you did this so thank you that was a long-winded trail but i hope no nah, it's it's good so honestly i don't know so i'll just say i don't know that you have told that story in in a package like that I don't, I've never heard you do that in 10 minutes. I've never heard you take that. We've talked about all these pieces and, you know, I live some of that same space as well. Um, but I think that's, that's another part of the whole deal, right? Is like, well, yeah, that's a, that's a story. You know, um, I'm going to just play on this a little bit. One of the things that is important, I come from a Scandinavian background and we have this idea of saga of story, like an important element of family, important element of community, important element of corporation, like in the broadest sense, as well as the business sense, is knowing your saga and sharing your saga time and time again with every group. That's how you build culture, right? So this is part of the saga. And and having, first of all, I th I, that's always been a thing I think Evangelist does so well, which is carries the story, right? It's one of the things I think Martin Fowler does really well too, is he carries the story for a lot of people uh, right, which is really powerful. And this I, this is a really valuable part of the story. And that puts so much of what Matt, <laughs> Matt's little thing, like, you know, conscious, subconscious thing, it puts so much of it in context, right? And explains why that's why that's a straight arrow, why that's a bullseye, why why that is such an important little thing right there. So uh, what what is what is this? So I have told this story before, but Oh, you so have? 
most uh, most folks don't know that there's an alternate kinlane.com and i believe a alternate api evangelist points to this but this is uh, uh the narrative of this called the seven year dispatches from the front lines of the api description wars and this photo is actually ah. so there's tony cam yeah is right here um i'm on the far right uh i believe that's jacob in the center so api blueprint and yuri so that's ramel yeah um and so yeah. anyways i tell it in a fictional sense it's 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 kind of tongue-in-cheek but i do tell the story um ab about this and how it worked out but in a ways um i've never Wait. told it as a talk or to right. anybody else we yeah. we need to just like press pause there's you have you have api <laughs> fan fiction alternative <laughs> history on your website and i didn't know about this <laughs> yes I, so I stopped, I I stopped I, yeah. there during the Trump administration because of <laughs> fake news. Like I really, I had a really severe, serious crisis with fake news and and everything. So I haven't. I, I think I've written a couple pieces in the last year or so, but I stopped for like three or four years. But I used to write there a lot. I'm really curious now. I I'll check it out on my own time. But this is like that's awesome. I want to go read a lot of this. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's I love awesome. It. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one of the, as you guys are talking about this history, which I am learning more about every day, um, I think the, I think um, it's, it's almost hard to, to, to solve the problem because if you put things on your website talking about Swagger uh, and not talking about uh, open API, then you're like helping their link equity. And if you start only talking about open API, then you don't get any of the people who are searching for swagger. So it's like hard to, it's it's really hard to imagine like a way of collecting kind of the traffic from the one and bringing people into the other. Um, I'm sure SEO geniuses will figure it out, but it's just, it's like, how do you say like the past is dead without also saying like the future isn't part of the past. And I think that meme like kind of, it makes you grapple with that, which is why it was so effective. Yeah, I mean, to me, the, the past is not dead, right? We've talked about this before. The past is your future. Like the way you retell your stories affects the way you will make your next move, right? And that's why, again, Matt's meme is so effective because it's right there. It's right there in the in the storyline. And, and in this case, it causes us to take 10 minutes, 15 minutes out of this, now 20, out of this, out of this podcast to go back and revisit. And that's gonna change the future of everyone here and everyone listening. You don't, you don't erase the past. That's the, that's the Soviet. You don't do that. What you do is you annotate, right? And that's what Ted Nelson always wanted to do. He wanted everybody to annotate what was existing, not take it, not move it, not rewrite it. But and that's why time is so important. And that's again, why I love what Matt did. I mean, it was just, it, well, it was born out of frustration mostly because yeah. so Phil and I manage openapi.tools, um, which is just, is a, a site we, we built in like a day to just list all kinds of cool open API tooling for documentation, DSL, SDK generation, all this kind of stuff. And we were just uh, rejecting pull requests after pull requests because the readme would have swagger in it, the project, uh, name had swagger in it the it had swagger somewhere in it like we would like we would go to their website control f command f swagger no we're good we don't want it and um and i was like what's the best way to communicate to people in my snarky sarcastic way that like swagger open api is technically swagger but we don't call it swagger we call it open api and i was like a meme a meme is how i'm going to do it and I thought I was just throwing it away, just throwing it out there. And um, I don't like Ken. Pro Ken knows because he's been at these meetings longer than I have. But every marketing meeting I've showed up to now is full nine, 10, 11 people showing up. Um, SEO experts are in there now. Uh, marketing people are in there now. Um, and it, it almost, I mean, it, it feels like there's like a renewed sense of like effort to move this forward. So it's interesting to say the least. That's the power of memes. 
that's the yeah. power of your snarky approach and the purpose you know like you're you know i i know your your personality well at this point after a couple of years of knowing you and and this is the importance of it is because i mean i would say you have more filters than phil and then other people that i know but your your filter is still pretty thin you still speak your mind and people appreciate that people need that and and i like i, I would say i have i have a lot of filters but i reach a point where my filters run thin and, and then i just say things and i tend to piss people off and so when i say say these things people are just like ken's being mean you know and so your approach cut through i think cut through really fast and and much further than my approach has and like my my image in the oai has been well since ken's been back there's a certain lot of problems in this in the oai you know it's like you know <laughs> so i think there's there's your you know your approach was much i mean people appreciate it. they see it they stumble across it we want people to have the latest docs we want people to understand tooling and this gets beyond seo there's a seo layer to this but there's an education and awareness layer that you sure. like pe the way people write readmes and write and name their tools sure. some people don't know that what they're doing they think swagger is the yeah. thing the, yeah. there's a huge amount of education either some people know and don't care and they use those words interchangeably swagger and open api and they think it doesn't matter because they don't understand the history so there's an education layer there but the, and then it's going to take how we move this forward is is a shit ton of other storytelling this podcast included is is how we educate people and keep moving on from it and we have to talk about it and we have to keep it front and center until we we move on and there's actually so after your uh matt did this there's been talk about hey can we get smart bear to give us back swagger so we can just use swagger because mm -hmm. which I, I was like, holy shit, like that's that's huge. That would be huge if we could do it. I don't know if it's gonna happen or be broached or whatever, because I don't want to be the front line of it because everyone it'll probably not happen if Ken does it because I'll just piss <laughs> people off. But that would be huge because swagger is a freaking cool word, you know. But after all, yeah. do you think, Matt, after all this time we could go back to using it after all of this? What what are your thoughts? That's a good question. i on the one hand. Swagger is so, um, uh, just so well known that I kind of feel like it's it would make sense to go back and use Swagger, but at the same time, like I, I don't, I don't know, like I, I feel like Open API describes a lot more than just a documentation at this point. Like it is a community around building APIs. It's a loose community and that's a topic for a whole different time. Um, but like there, there is a very loose confederation of people working together on the specification on, on tooling around the specification on content around the specification that I almost, I, I mean, I, I almost feel like it would, it would almost just kind of be like a, 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 a dick move in a way to like, after, five six years of so much effort and like building up open api for us to just kind of be like all right we're calling a swagger now if yeah. that makes sense well and my and I've, i think i've had this conversation with you mike but this is this was how i convinced daryl to get in because daryl used to uh daryl miller who's on mm -hmm. the tsc um he used to be one of the trolls in my timeline telling me swagger was was dumb and and i should give it give up and so I used to fight with Daryl quite a bit, who I, I I adore, on this subject, and try to convince him. And so my belief in Swagger, what Swagger was, and Open API is, is is it ain't the thing. It's a bridge to the future. It's how we get the masses to the future. So I've always equated Open API to like the bridges that you would build in World War II over rivers to get your whole entire army to the other side. They're temporary. They're, it's not actually the right way or, or the meaningful way we should be doing all of this work. But we've got a whole bunch of people to educate about what what 
HTTP is, what good API design is, what common patterns are, and a lot of things. And it's the vehicle that gets us there and helps us get on the same page in that. It's not the end goal. It's, 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 it, and so I agree, Matt, that going back to Swagger would, would, um, not be positive, not be forward motion. And I think if anything, we, we figure out the, what the next step is. And I would say async API and JSON schema, as far as a more complete bridge to the future. And I would say gets more closer to Mike's vision of, you know, who gives a shit about the transport? Like the HTTP doesn't matter. The TCP doesn't matter. The messages are what matters. And, and I think <clears throat> JSON schema speaks to that. I think Alp speaks to that. And so I don't want to go back, um, but I'm still frustrated by how we get to that next step. I, I can't quite see that next step. So. So I think to get to that next step, we need swagger and we need to throw a funeral for it to like, just be perfect. Like we need, we need to get swagger. We need to get the name. We need to get swagger.io. We need to get the domain and we need to throw a party and just be like, Hey, it's great. It's awesome. We have it. It's dead. Like it kind of like, like what Mike said, like, this is part of the story. This is in the, this is the, the next step of the story, which very rarely do you actually get to see your next steps <laughs> when, whenever you're looking at a story. But like, th this is really, in my opinion, what it would be is get, get swagger, get the domain and bury it, murder it. That resonates with me so much. I don't want to go down this road, yeah. but I did two funerals and a birth last week. So I, it told, well, I didn't know that funerals, when I started memorials being like, we got to move on type memorials and they were joyful, emotional, but I, that resonates with me massively that that's what we need to do with swagger is. We and, it, and it doesn't need to be like exactly to your point. It doesn't need to be like a, a, a sad affair, like celebrate mm -hmm. what swagger mm -hmm. gave us. Mm -hmm. Um, because it, it did transform API documentation and it has allowed API documentation to evolve to a point now where it's its own conference. It's its own community. It has its own technical steering committee. It has its own marketing. It's provided jobs for countless amounts of developers across the world. Uh, people like Ken is one I can think of like all four of us for sure. Arnaud, Laurent, uh, probably just butcher's yeah. name. Mark uh, Andre Giroux has been doing a lot with Open API GitHub. Like, I don't think we would be sitting here right now without Swagger and what it did 10 years ago, 15 years ago. So in my opinion, we get it, we throw a party, we memorialize it, we talk about how great it was, and then we close the door on that chapter and all you know, we we figure out how to backlink everything, work out the link with equity through SEO, and then move on. You know, if if you if you think about it from to to press the point from that story point of view, one one of the customers I used to work with was 3M Corporation. 3M Corporation launched with this notion they bought a bunch of uh, mining property sight unseen, knowing that there was going to be a certain certain amount of value in this property. They finally get out to the to the property they spent their last bit of money on and that stuff's not even there. They bought they bought the wrong piece of property. They the 3M company started on the on on a failed notion, but they were like, "You know what? But there's a lot of this other stuff here and you can make adhesives with that." And they were like, "Okay, let's get started. Let's mine this stuff. Let's let's do that." They have a museum of all of the ideas and of all of the products and all of their history. And they embraced that beginning history. I'm not saying that this was like, you know, sight unseen, you know, not what we wanted, but that's part of their story. And that powers what they do. And, and for the lesson they learned from that was, even if it turns out you started in the wrong place, that's okay. You started and you can take yeah. what you have and you can build on it. And when, you know, when we think about, I love Matt, what you just said about the notion, rarely do you get to see sort of the span of change in your lifetime. Yeah. 
but but we're we're lucky enough to live in this age this information age where change happens so much faster we can see i can see now when you go to the to the api museum and you go to the swagger display in the api museum and you go to the open api display and you go to the schema display you know this is all part of it right there's lots and lots of of value in all of this and what you don't want to do is you don't want to lose what all those things Matt was saying about uh, like how effective Swagger was to, to bring things together. You don't want to get rid of that because of a particular event or a series of events that happened in a, you know, in a particular year, right? We embrace all of that and that's all part of our story. I love this. And yeah, and like, I always wonder if that's where the hesitancy comes from on the Swagger side, which is they may be afraid to hand over that stuff because they think, no offense, Ken, they think Ken is just going to take it out back and beat it and it's never going to see the light of day ever again when instead like may, maybe the pitch is to to smart bear and everyone else is like no we want to we want this obviously for uh linking purposes and educational purposes but we're not just gonna we're not just gonna take control of it and throw it in the the bottom of like the the closet or whatever we're gonna embrace it for what it is and use it to help us move forward. Maybe that maybe that's what their hesitancy is. I don't know. Yeah. There's there's this uh, interesting like uh, thing I've thought a lot about um, in the past with like user stories and, and why things are the way they are. And I think when we're first designing systems, like why is why does this uh, subway go in this direction or why does it go over here? The people who made it can tell you you know why things are the way they are. But like two generations later, you don't remember the user story. Like, you know, Amazon doesn't, um, when they send you your email, they say something's on its way. They don't tell you what it is because Gmail, if you have a Gmail address, uh, Google will read that and then build a profile about you. So they don't put that information in there because they don't want, uh, you know, Google to be learning from their data. So like, there's all these like little things like that, which are like kind of like subtle design changes in the world. And we don't remember where they came from. And three generations later, like we don't know why we give out statins anymore to patients. Like they're not good for a lot of things we give them out for. But like someone somewhere was like, do that most of the time. Or CPR, another good example. It's like you're not supposed to breathe in the mouth anymore. Um, but like you're still supposed to do the compressions. And like you know, we just didn't reevaluate that for 40 years because like nobody like remembered the origin stories and thought about why we're doing things the way we are. And I feel like this all comes down to the community as a whole. Like what, what do we want to say about the API community? What do we want to say about the way that companies collaborate and share these capabilities across themselves? And if we talked about those things, uh, then it's not about open API and Swagger anymore. It's just like, right. oh, obviously like this institution that cares about these things care about connecting people. And part of connecting people is like, we need to change the name. And when we look at things at the wrong level of abstraction and like we're thinking about us as this versus this, then you obviously like posture up for that. Um, yeah. And I think today, like, you know, I kind of know what the stories are that we care about, but I'm not sure like everyone would give the same stories for what we care about in the space as each other. Um, but I think they'd be closer than people would expect even across the Swagger open API divide. Well, and everything, Matt articulated about the benefits of Swagger and Open API, like the the documentation, the communication, people working together, it created the OAI. Like that's what I've always seen as being Swagger Open API. It's not the spec. It's mm -hmm. all the things that it yeah. enables and it brought us yeah. together. It gave us a common vocabulary. It allowed us to wrap and start thinking about our models or in a in a common way. It it's it it's done all of these things but the spec itself is isn't the thing and right. and this can be but everyone focus hyper focuses on it being the thing to the point where like i mean the the other issue that i caused a st stir with in the oai when i came in as the co-chair is is i'm like hey how do we get more mo momentum with the oai and and oas in in the community and everyone was like we're working as hard as we can on the spec. We, we're doing what we can. And they thought I meant the spec and I meant everything. Like, how do we mm -hmm. like turn this up? You know, like all the people that, that Matt mentioned, GitHub, you know, uh, Mark, Mark doing that work, all of the, like, there's all these people doing amazing things. Let's turn up the volume. Let's tell the stories. Let's get together and celebrate yeah. this. And, and 
but some so many people especially technically minded folks are just folk hyper focused on the spec being the thing and the yep. enabler but it's much bigger than that and at some point here i mean i feel like we could totally ditch the spec and mm -hmm. and hopefully we're all working together well, in some way i mean that I'm, i don't at, i can't see that i mean at some point that will happen right it will be superseded by other things by other creative works by other people who are doing the same work connecting people making things work together technology will change in ways that that sort of makes some of what the original specifications do unneeded right i mean mm -hmm. there are so many things that will happen um there's an inevitability to me there's an inevitability to this notion of of lowering the barrier of entry increasing accessibility and usability and observability and all the things and that will mean eventually all like you said the the bridges that were built you know the the bridges that were quickly built to solve a problem will eventually be gone but that's fine that's the way that is what stays is the saga what stays is the story and the principles and the values and that's what i love about you know what we're talking about here it transcends a particular instance in time or piece of hardware or software that's me see what you caused matt see what you did with your memeing <laughs> no <laughs> one no <laughs> Actually, I should go find that meme and throw it back on Twitter and see what kind of outrage I can cause today. Us too. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's a good thing Turn for that outrage. Turn yeah. that up, yeah. Schedule I mean, that I, every month. <laughs> I mean, I just, I get Phil to do it for me at this point. I just watch his Twitter and I'm like, hmm, you do you. <laughs> you do you. <laughs> you. You do it, buddy, and I will just watch the, the fireworks yeah yeah so yeah. you play you play the good cop is that what you do matt is that, is that the deal with you too i play the moderating cop I, I, <laughs> not quite I, the good I, cop i let mike be the good cop i let Bill <laughs> be the bad cop and i just sit here like kids kids <laughs> and then oh, throw no. a little bit Throw another log in the fire. Oh, you kids. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> another... But also, Phil, let's talk about airplanes. And Bill was just. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. You know? And Phil call me out again. And when every year when I used to post all the miles that I would fly, I would always get a note from Phil. It's like, man, you got to stop. <laughs> I mean, well, I, Phil, I, I've stopped, by the way, Phil, just letting you know. I, I'm not yeah. Yeah. It's like it he almost got me stabbed in New York City one time, so that was cool. What? Wait, what? We uh, over so Swagger? We, no, wait, hold it. No, no, no over a hot dog. Phil, Phil would know the one alleyway in New York where if you said Swagger, yeah. they'd stab you. Yeah, he would actually. No, we were. Uh, I, I went up to New York City for a friend's wedding party. Is a mutual friend of Phil and our Phil mine and uh, him and I, and we were leaving. Um. And we rode the elevator down. He's like, in his British accent, he's like, have you ever had a New York City hot dog before? I'm like, no, I can't really say that I have. He's like, okay, great. Let's go get one. I'm like, okay. It's, seems like a normal thing to do at two o'clock in the morning. And I guess Phil, even though he was a resident in New York City, forgot that his accent alludes that he's not an American. So he didn't get like the New York, I'm a resident of New York, the unspoken discount. So the, uh, the the hot dog vendor, I like, tried to charge him like 30 bucks for two hot dogs and a pretzel or something like that. And, <laughs> and Phil was just like, I'm not paying this. And I'm just sitting here like, oh, Lord, have mercy. And they they were going at it for a minute. And then we all walked away. And then my lift came to pick me up right by the hot dog cart vendor. And I was just kind of looking at him. And he was looking at me. And I'm just like, like, it's just, just yeah. So, no, I mean, like, it's, it's fun. Like. It, it's it's fun doing the the podcast and stuff with Phil. Like it's he like I owe if, if there's one person in the API community I can say I owe my career to with like learning about APIs, it's Phil. Um, like his book, uh, Build APIs You Won't Hate, was what got me down this path. Um, his Twitter, it was from him I learned about Open API. Funny enough, like he was the one rattling on about it, and I was like, okay, well let's figure out what this is. And because of that, then I figured out who Ken and Mike, um, other people in the community just kept, I was like, okay, cool. You know? So, I mean, like if there's anyone I, I owe my, my career to it's, it's, it's Phil. 
Um, so I feel like A, I've earned the right to give him a hard time, but B, um, you know, like it's, it's also like kind of coming back to like what, what we were just talking about like with the community and stuff though, like Phil is an incredibly important voice to have, but Phil is also prone to overextending himself to a degree that it's almost like it's time for more people to start stepping up yeah. and taking on, not necessarily, I don't want to call it the burden because it's not a burden to talk about this stuff. It's not a burden to hop on a podcast, hop on a marketing meeting, hop on Twitter, make a meme and spark a widespread revolution. But it, it, if, if there's anything I like, I want people to take away from anything I talk about. It's like, it's, it's time to try and figure out how do we get more voices into the OAI, into the OAS and basically become storytellers, whether it's, Developers who have been writing code against the spec, marketers who are learning how to work with developers on the spec, whether it's it's consumers of the spec, um, and I, I feel like that's that feels like the next logical step to me. Like we're we've mostly solved what seems like the biggest, the last biggest central issue was figuring out how to get Jason Schema and OAI to play nice together, and they have. And now it feels like the next thing is building that evangel uh, evangelizing base of not just the typical, or not, I don't mean to say about it, not like the standard people, but like other people. Mark Andre is a good one. You know, he's, hey, he was a GraphQL evangelist for a long time, and I feel like we've converted him. Mm-hmm. Um, no, I don't fantastic. think he's converted, but he sees he sees the benefit. He sees the, he's, he's he saw the light. He saw, he saw the, the light. light. You know, but you know, really, I think, I, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no. I mean, I, my, my, I was just finishing up. Just like, yeah. That that is the next thing. Like, how do we draw more people in so we can give Phil a break, give Ken a break, give <laughs> Mike, everyone else, let y'all go on vacation, <laughs> and know that like this is gonna be taken care of. Well, you know, I think one of the things do, doing this as long as is is as some of us have not only do you get to see the arc, but you also get to see the loop, right? You get to see the cycle. You get to see the, the, the ins and outs, the breathing out, the breathing in. And I, th- yep. I, you know, I, I think one of, the, one of the cycles that I see, especially in, spe- in specification spaces, you know, it starts without a specification. It starts as creative effort. It starts with Tony Tam trying to solve a problem. You know, he's not building yep. anything. It was the same thing for, for Mike Kelly building Hal. He's like, he's not building the spec. He's just trying to solve a problem right now. So it starts with solving problems and then it attracts a group and then it becomes, you know, an organization and an effort and specification and authoring and so on and so forth. And then it becomes the specification. It's not solving the problem, it's a specification that takes nursing and effort. And then at some point the specification starts to have a life of its own and you need another set of creative people, another set of people that are just trying to solve problems to help sort of refresh and empower and invigorate. I just had an experience with a with a side project that I've worked on for several years with Mike Kelly, Hal Forms. I w- worked for a long time to, to sweeten up this specification. Just this past week, I got a huge walkthrough from a very good friend of mine who is trying to use it, telling me, you know, the specification is great, but here's what I'm trying to solve and I can't figure out how to do it. You know, when you finally have real people solving real problems who come back and tell you, this is great, but how come I yeah. can't one, two, three? Let's start, let's try to build A, B, C. So I think one of the things I hear Matt saying is it, it's time for us to start paying attention to a, another set of voices again about people who are out there evangelizing, talking about it, using it all the time. And let's learn from that. So it's time to it's time to embrace that next revolution, that next cycle. And I and I think that's actually a really good a sign of really mature, healthy space because it's like no 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 let's let's start talking let's let's go back to principles let's start talking about you know why we were doing this and what's going on. I th- I think that's a really cool idea. Well, yeah, and, and I would, it's I would add, oh no, go ahead, Matt. No, go ahead, Ken. There you go. No, you, no, 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 no. You're the older, you're the older brother. You go. (laughs) 
Um, I was just going to say, backing up what, what Matt said and adding a little bit more detail is, is, you know, to reflect like what I see, like you, you owe, you say, you owe your kind of career and what you're doing, your API journey to, to Phil is he, you've emulated a lot of what he does in a different way in your own personality, but the, the core characteristics being storytelling, um, opinionated, but informed opinionated and then rolling up your sleeves and actually doing work you kind of glossed over it the reason why json schema mm -hmm. and open api play nicely now together is because of the work that phil did like worked his his ass off to like make that happen yeah. now is not easy because the o well the oai you know it, it's difficult to move that beast forward and json yeah. schema is its own beast and so mm -hmm. yep. i think you know, that, that next wave of folks that we need to see in this space, you know, a step up is like, you know, we need all those characteristics. It's not just soapboxing and, and, and storytelling. It's, it's, you gotta be informed. You gotta be solving problems and, and tackling, you know, what's, what's meaningful and then being willing to step up and tell the story of that and, and share yeah. that work and help move the overall conversation forward. So. Good. Yep. Yeah, it's a, you know, I mean, it, it, it's a, it's largely a thankless job in a way, like, obviously, Phil got thanked for his efforts moving Jason schema into, um, or, it, like, integrating with open API, but outside of like the core committee, I, you know, I, I wonder how much people really know, like, how much do people know about Lorna J Mitchell, getting the webhooks object yeah. in 3.1? I, I know I've met her personally. She's an awesome person. She and she's one of the most knowledgeable people yep. um, I could possibly think of in in uh, the API space. If I didn't know who she was and I didn't know that she was pushing so hard for that, I feel like that's probably and that that probably is kind of where like the I, I feel like as someone who's used Twitter mildly well, where like the OAI Twitter could kind of step up and kind of evangelize these people who are doing the hard work, rolling their yeah. sleeves up um, yeah. to kind of give them, a, you know, even just like a, a thank you tweet is means a lot more than what some people do. And, you know, it's, 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 there, there's a, there's so many different avenues and factors at play here with all this stuff. Um, so there's obviously no right answer. There's no wrong answer. There's just a lot of work to do is ultimately what it's going to end up being always well and and i would say you know this extends to async api spec like you can see this at playing out this week and last week on twitter with lorna jane and fran working on um mm -hmm. async api perspective issues so it's a real you got to tune in i i get lost in every time i'm talking about it is with with event driven uh apis like whether you're the publisher or the consumer what perspective if you're the provider or the client and they have a an iot uh light street light example so are you the city who owns the street light and you're publishing and subscribing messages are you someone building an app for the neighborhood or are you the street light which blew my mind because i'm like maybe i'm a street lamp maybe i'm a street light i don't know i'm like <laughs> total existential crisis but didn't want to like tune into what uh, what Lorna and Fran are talking about there, because they're yeah. and and a, the async community is really good at, about this. And I'm trying to get that emulated in the OAI and JSON schema communities. Like every one of these conversations, like amplify, make a video, record a video, publish it, write a blog yeah. post, get it out there, because this is this is how you do you know how you 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 illuminate and and bring make people more aware of these these tough issues when it comes to doing api as well so and the contributions like matt said yeah yeah who's yeah. contributing and yeah it's a diverse group and it, it needs to reflect that yeah, yeah. and i think well, uh uh i was add one one cherry maybe yeah, it's a good ahead, cherry man. and if not someone else just add a different one so there's a different cherry at the very top of the pie but um but yeah i love i love everything you guys are talking about um, and I think like all the, all, the more we can put eyes on the problems and the people who are moving them forward and the stories that matter is, is really important. Um, but I would say like the core story that like was that common through line from, uh, the old swagger days all the way up to now and probably beyond 
is that this is just about relationships and us developers collaborating with each other. That's all it is. It's like collaborating at scale and solving our community's problems together. And that's something that you can like sit back and be like, oh yeah, that's important. Like regardless of the technology that you're playing with. Love it. Yes. Yep. Um, so we're, we're, we're on the hour. So, um, this is crazy. This is fun, Matt. I, was, I totally, I, I have to admit, I, I've been too busy this week to catch up on the Slack and what we were supposed to talk about and what we were going to do. And, and so I was genuine when I said, what are we going to talk about? Like I had no idea. So this is like great. Aiden, this is like, Aiden kept messaging me and he's like, what do you want to talk about? I'm like, I don't know. Like, let's just. But my favorite part of this entire chat was that, can you ask, what are we talking about? And then Mike took it and then threw it to Matt and then Matt threw it to me. And we went yeah. all the way around the circle in 10 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, this, this is, this is a lot of fun. I really, thank you guys so much for having me. Like it was, it was a oh, blast. Yeah, yeah, great. Yeah, great. Yeah. great. Thanks a lot, Matt. Absolutely. This is what it's all about, Matt. So yeah. thank you. Um, and let's keep talking, little brother. And let's keep making yeah. this happen. Yeah, have a good day, big yeah. brother. All righty. We'll talk to you later. You. Cheers. All have right. a good one, man. Cheers. You too. Well, that was fun. Yeah. yeah. I feel like we're all refreshed after our breaks. <sighs> Energized. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I think we, we got to make sure to take breaks regularly. So I think Mike Mike will have a break late coming in August, and we'll yeah, have to make yeah, sure and, yeah. and keep doing it ourselves too, Aiden. Definitely. Well, yep. um, I guess I'll let Mike go first here, and uh, you enjoy your weekend, sir. And, Thank you, uh, gentlemen. Great as usual. You take care of yourself, and we'll stay in touch. See you on the net. And Oh, I'll be talking to you next week because we've got a session next week. That's right. So you and I have cool. a session next week. Yeah. Yeah. So cool. I will see you next week. So uh, thanks. Have a good one. Be safe out there, Aiden. Yeah, we'll do. See you, Mike. Bye bye. That's ominous. Right, Does he know well, something about you that I don't? <laughs> <laughs> no. It's just. Um, so, uh, yeah. Um, look forward to our dinner tomorrow uh, next week and actually yeah. seeing you in person, my friend. For sure. Um, I'll, uh, I didn't know you were uh, just getting into spicy food, so we'll pick something mild for you. <laughs> no, I, I can I can go. It's just like we'll go down this road, and I'm actually getting better and, and evolving. It's just like I, my older brother growing up, he used to like smear jalapenos on my lips and like do really – like hold me down and do mean things with hot chilies and stuff. So I, I was like, oh, I don't like it. And there's other issues, but no, I'm, I'm game. I'm willing to try. So um, uh, I'm just kind of a wuss about it and admittedly. So well, I'm sure we'll have a good conversation and enjoy the food too. Um, good to see you, sir. Thanks so much. Yeah. Well, enjoy the rest of your weekend uh, in the Bay and I will see you next week. Sounds good. See you later. Cheers. All right. That was a great one. That was awesome. <laughs> Matt's, Matt's awesome. Um, anyways, y'all have a good uh, rest of your week and we'll see you next Friday.